So the last video we left off um, having implemented some social distancing um, and we, we briefly mentioned some techniques like um, inheritance and um, polymorphism. I just thought I'd start this video off um, explaining those in a bit more detail, especially the polymorphism one. So that's what we're going to do initially. So, polymorphism is the ability to take more than one form um, yeah, it's the ability for an object to take more than one form um, and it's one of the main pillars of our object-oriented programming along with encapsulation and inheritance. Um, encapsulation I mentioned very early on in the, this video series um, and that's the idea of of binding properties and methods together in a single unit. So right at the start where we made our, our original person. Here in this class uh, we bound the properties and the methods there are quite a few now the properties and methods together inside of the one class binding them together. And where possible, making sure that our attributes, our properties, sorry, our properties are only accessible from inside of the class. So that's where we've talked about having these access modifiers private and protected. So we introduced private to you before. Private means it can only be accessible inside of this class. And protected is essentially private but any inheriting classes can also access them. So we saw with the social distancing person that they could access the velocity x, velocity y and colour because those attributes were protected. And public accessibility means that it's, it's accessible from outside of the class. So our methods mostly public. So we used, yeah, we used a grid uh, get center x, get center y, rather than returning or being able to access our x and y um, from outside of the class. We made a method in here to get what we needed from that that class. And inheritance, um, that was with the the socially distancing person. Um, that's where we inherited the properties and methods um, from one class to another. So you're going to see that there are various names for these. Um, the, the original class, base class, parent class. Uh, some languages refer to it as a super class. And the class that's inheriting, uh, subclass, child class, um derived class all different names for the same things and it just allows uh, to have a new class that's got all the properties and methods of another class to be able to reuse extend and modify the behaviors so we haven't done a great deal of modification yet but <coughs> um, but our subclass I was socially distanced in person, the inheritance indicated there. Um, we, we've only got a constructor going on right now, um, but we will extend this uh, shortly. We will be extending all of the properties and methods in the subclass. So that briefly goes over encapsulation and inheritance again. Um, what we really want need to focus on right this second is polymorphism and making sure we understand that. 
So um, it's a combination of two words, poly and morphs. And poly means multiple and morphs means forms. So polymorphisms means many forms. Um, and in C sharp, that's the ability for us to have classes that implement different methods depending on um, the class that we're using. Um, and they've got the same name. So generally speaking, uh, you might not have done much coding where you've you've had two methods that have the same name, um, but we can do, and that's where polymorphism comes in. And we've got two main types, compile time and runtime polymorphism. So we're gonna give you a brief of those with some examples. So compile time polymorphism um, is essentially having the same method name but having different parameters means that we would go to the different method depending on which one uh, was called. So in this case if we uh, called add numbers and in brackets only had two parameters it would go and do this method here. So I'll give an example of that call. Give it a pen out. So if in my main or somewhere else I declared calculate C equals new calculate I could then go C dot um, add numbers and depending on what I put in the brackets here would depend on which method it would go to so if I put um, two integers in it will jump to this one and if I was to put three it would jump to this one instead. So we've got multiple methods with the same name but we've got different parameters. So if I do two comma four comma six well it is definitely going to go down to this one because that's the one that matches um, the parameters that have been set in here. So although we would be calling it using the same name because of the number of parameters well, and the type of parameters as well, because this could be different. Again, we could have another um, another method called add numbers with three parameters as well. But instead of integer, if we went for something like float, bad writing. If they, they were all floats instead, and I called my subroutine with floating point numbers, then it would go to the one where it's, it's floats. <coughs> so we can have um, we can have many methods named the same, but we won't be able to have any with a um, with a different, oh, they've got to have a different um, signature kind of thing to them. They're going to have a different set of parameters, whether that's just different because they are different types or because they're different because there's a different amount of them. Just going to show you where that already exists. Um, so we have a random number generator, random dot next. And if we look at this, next has two overloads. So we've overloaded this method twice. So we can have, uh, sorry, it's got two additional overrides. So there's three possible things here. So it says here one of three. So we can have random dot next, random with uh, one value in the parameters here and uh, the random dot next with two values in the parameters here. So 
the random code has already done this for you. It's already got some uh, polymorphism where the next method um, has three possible methods it could go to, depending on which parameters or which arguments we put in here depends on which version of next it will go to. So we've seen this stuff before and if you've used console right line take it back console right line has got 18 or it's got 19 different um, different overrides there's 19 different ways of writing a console right line with no parameters, with a boolean, with a char, with a char array, with a decimal value, with a double value, with a float value, with an int value, with a long value, with an object value, with a string value, with a uint, a u long, with a string value, and then um, some additional object arguments, with a string value, and then an array of object arguments, with a char array and then an index from where it's meant to uh, start and end with a string array and two object arguments three object arguments four object arguments so you can see that we've they've got many different method overrides here for the right line so method overloading here um, is done at compile time and compile time polymorphism in C sharp. Runtime polymorphism is where where we've got some inheritance going on, and we are this time allowed to have a method with the exact same name and the exact same number of parameters. So here we've got our base class, our parent class, our super class called users, and our derived class, our char class, our subclass called details. And we know that it's inherited from users because of this area here. And the parent class has a method, a method called get info. And so does the child. The child has a get info um, class. Now, when we create an instance of um, <coughs> of the child class, so details, so details, details, we'll just call it D, equals new to make an instance, new, I'm going to rub that out. Details D um, equals new new details. And then we call d dot get info. Well, it, it will know to do this one and not this one because um, this object is of type details. <coughs> Now, last time we made uh, instances of both the social distancing person and the new person inside of the people array, which was declared as a person, person class. Um, and we were able to do that because the social distancing person inherits from person. So we were able to put those two different types of objects inside of that one array 
And so back to our example here, we could, in, last time I did derived class d equals new uh, details, or sorry, details d equals new details, I could have users, um, again I'll call it d, users d equals new details. And then when I call d dot get info, it's still going to go down to this one because the object d is of type details, not of type users, even though our data type here is users. So this, this is called method overriding. And you notice that they've had to use the keywords override down here and virtual here. So we're going to have a little go at that now with our socially distanced in person. So um, you might have noticed from, from what we did before that when our socially distancing people actually get contacted by a normal person moving around because the way that we um, deal with the collision and we just swap the velocities, the socially distancing person starts moving. So you see some, some cases you, you start to have um, black circles moving around um, and that shouldn't be happening or we, sh we don't want that to be happening. And we can use what we've learned just now. We can use um, polymorphism to help us to redefine a method. Um, and we're going to demonstrate that using the move person. So we're going to include one of those two words that we discovered in the last <coughs> in the in the last. Um, Thing that we just looked at and um, the idea of making it virtual so we'll make pers uh, move person virtual therefore we can override it so our socially distancing person public override so it's going to override override the virtual method and visual studio helps us by finding things that we can override and we're going to be overriding move person it identifies that as what we can override because of that word virtual and let it do the uh, writing for us and we're still overriding so we're going to have the exact same um, parameters coming into it and by default it gives you base dot move person the other time that we saw base was in our constructor and that was to help construct our base class um, here it allows us to call our base class. So this move person, when it gets called, would go and call the move person in the base class. We don't want that to happen. So we're gonna get rid of that. Um, and now when a socially distancing person uh, has the call to this um, subroutine, they won't move because there's no code here to move them. Previously, um, there would have been movement based upon uh, VX and VY, um, which initially on a socially distancing person was zero, but because when we detected a collision, we swapped over the velocities, um, their, their velocity would change. Um, and we were still calling move person, so they were still actually moving around. Um, you can try it again yourself. You can go back in the video and see that. Um, but now, when we call move person, if it's a socially distancing person, nothing will happen. We've overridden um, the moving of a person. So we call move person in the timer tick. Now, we don't know what person that will be, but if that's a socially distancing person, 
it would go to the socially distanced in person um, version of move person rather than um, move person itself. <coughs> we don't get any sort of override information um, like we got with the random movement or uh, with, with random, sorry, or with um, console right line because this is of type person um, and it doesn't show us that we can we can have multiple overrides. It's not uh, an overload, it's an override, this. That's the reason. Okay, so if we run the code again, we should see that when the um, the social distance in person, the black person, uh, gets hit, they're not going to they're not going to start traveling because their move person operation is um, is to do nothing because it'll be call calling move person in the socially distancing one rather than move person in the person class. So we'll play this and we don't have any black circles moving around this time. There's some slight movement when they do um, get contact with others and that's due to the, the way that we did the overlapping and making sure that they, when they collided they didn't um, remain, remain in contact with each other. But there's no black circles um, moving around. I'll quickly show off that it, it has worked by just commenting this out. comment this code out so now it will immediately it will be going to the move person in person when it's a socially distance in person so we should see um, those people move around just as a little bit of proof so we're looking for times where yeah, there's, there's black circles moving around there and actually moving. And not just moving on an overlap, they're moving because they are, that's what they're doing. They're calling that movement code. Again, we'll uncomment this. comment this code and focus in on those um, moving people and make sure that the socially distancing ones don't move even when they've come into contact with somebody else. So we're allowing some movement for them for the overlap but that they're not swapping velocities and continuing to move afterwards. And yeah, we can see that. So focus on some again. Yeah, there's no there's no black ones um no socially distancing ones dotting uh, going around and moving around. There's some more extreme numbers, so five hundred of them. Yeah, we'll see you'll see some being pushed around um but it's not the case of of any um Black one's actually moving around now, any socially distancing one that's moving. Okay, so we've not actually done too much to our code here, but we've tried to get the idea of ensuring that we understand those three concepts. Um, in encapsulation, tying the properties and methods um, together and binding them in a class. Inheritance inheriting the attributes or the, the properties and methods of a parent class and extending them further and polymorphism putting into action that extending them further by making um, methods that override um, existing existing methods in the parent class. We don't have an example of the other type of um, polymorphism yet uh, but we may wish to do that 
and that would be where we made a separate a separate um, method with the same name. So void move uh, public void move person, but a different amount of parameters. <coughs> so in this case, we can still have the name move person in here. And depending on if we call this one, it would be it would be down to how many parameters we passed in. And that was our um, overloading the methods. Where we've got the keyword override, that's where we're overriding um, in a parent class.